This large language model app can answer questions, complete tasks, summarize text, and write and run Python code. But the real kicker, it's free. It's not using the OpenAI API, it is completely open source. In this video, we're going to be speed building the app and stacking a 7 billion parameter model, a 13 billion parameter model, and a bunch more up against OpenAI to see if they can even get close. One of the easiest ways to get access to open source large language models is through GPT-40. Through it, you can actually use a chat-like interface whilst running the models locally on your machine. The upside to using the GUI is that it'll actually download the model weights to your machine, which means that you can then use it inside of Langchain. There's GUI-based installers available via the GPT for all website. I've also included detailed steps on how to run the code if you want to get it up and running yourself. I'll get to that a little bit later. So first up, I downloaded and installed the GPT for all GUI to my Windows machine. The first time I did this, I wasn't paying attention. So I had no idea where the models would be downloaded to. Pay special attention to the default download folder for the weights. If you breeze through it like I did, you can bring it back up by checking the download path. In my case, they were saved here. I downloaded the Llama 13 billion snoozy model and a couple of others to put them to the ultimate test. Would these actually stack up against the Big guy. Now that I've got some model weights downloaded, I'm going to whip up an app using Streamlit. This will allow you to interact with the different LLM models through a simple user interface. We're going to blast through this pretty quickly because it's pretty similar to what we did inside of the Langchain Crash Course. In the Langchain Crash Course, we started out by creating a file called app.py. This is where our LLM application is going to live. Now, the first thing that we need to do is import Streamlit as ST. This is going to give us our app development framework. Let's add a comment app dev framework and then what we want to do is have a title so we're going to say title actually we don't need to set it to a variable so st.title i'm going to plug in a emoji because we've got to make it look sweet and we're going to title it gpt for y'all y'all uh, we should probably escape that perfect all right cool so this is the title and then what we want to do is let's start up our app just to make sure this is working i can't imagine this is broken right now so you can run Streamlit app or Streamlit run app.py. This will open it up in a new browser window. Perfect. So we've got GPT for y'all happening right now. So that is our title. Now, if we wanted to change that, you could change it to whatever you wanted to, something a little bit more appropriate for a business application. Okay, so that is our title. The next thing that we want to do is include a place that we can actually pass through a prompt. So we're going to create a variable called prompt. So prompt holder. So this is the prompt text box. And we are going to set that equal to st.text input. If you had bigger text inputs, you might choose to go with text area. I found text input works pretty well. And we are going to include the label for this. So we're going to say plug in. Let me make sure my head is not covering that. Now we're good. Plug in your prompt here. And if we go and save and we go and refresh our app again, take a look. So we've now got somewhere that we can type in a prompt, right? So I could say, um, hey, how's it going? And eventually when we hit enter on our keyboard, we want to do something right now. It's not doing anything because like you can see that I'm hitting enter. If I go and change it, if I hit enter, it's running up there. You can see it really briefly, right? We actually need to do something or activate a trigger once we go and hit enter. So relatively easily. So if we hit enter, do this. So we're going to say if prompt, and then all we need to do is right now for right now, we don't actually want to go and import anything. We'll get to that. So we're going to write st.write and we're just going to write out our prompt. So we can at least see that we're doing something. We're getting a little bit of feedback. So we're going to say, if we hit enter, then we're going to do whatever's here, right? So that is our baseline app. Let's just go and test it out. So if we go and refresh, so you can see it's already printing out the output of our prompt there. So if I go and change it to yo, 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 you can see that we are outputting the output there. That at least gives us the shell for our GPT for all app. So we've got an app that we can interact with, but we haven't actually done any LLM stuff yet. Time to bring the thunder. First up, importing Langchain dependencies. So we've got the shell up and running, but right now we haven't actually done anything with Langchain. This is where that changes. So we're gonna jump back into our app and what we're now gonna do is first up, import a couple of dependencies. So import dependencies. So we're first up going to import the GPT for all class. So from Langchain, LLMs, we're going to import a GPT for all. So this is going to allow us to actually leverage our GPT for all weights. What we also want to do is import the prompt template. So from langchain. Uh, actually, we don't need to go to a sub module. We're just going to import the prompt template. Port, we spell that right from langchain. There we go. Prompt template. And we're going to import the LLM chain. So the prompt template is going to be used for prompt formatting. The lang chain, uh, LLM chain is going to give us a chain that we can execute. Perfect. The last thing that we want to do is the path to or set up a variable to hold the path to our weight. So path to weights. So we're going to create a variable called path and set that equal to 
the area that you've actually gone and set up your GPT for or GUI to download weights to. In my particular case, it's inside of users, user, app data, local, nomic.ai and GPT for all. So if I actually go to that path, I'm actually going to grab a specific set of weights. So let me show you that. You can see I've actually got a couple downloaded already. Now, if you haven't downloaded any, you're probably not going to see any bin files there. But you can actually choose which model that you want to use. So let's say, for example, I wanted to use Llama 13 billion, uh, 13 billion Snoozy. I could actually copy that entire file path or file name. And then what we're going to do is we are going to paste that into our path at the end. So this is actually going to give us the full file path to our weights. Now, remember that in the documents video, we used the OpenAI LLM module. The core change here is that we're now going to use the GPT for all class. Langchain supports a range of different LLM sources, which makes it pretty straightforward to sum them out as needed. I tried doing this initially with Hugging Face Hub, but noticed that inference was taking quite some time. If you'd like to see me do a video with Hugging Face Hub, let me know in the comments below. For now, we're going to stick with GPT for all though, because that's what I promised in this video. So the first thing that we need to do is actually create an instance of our LLM. So instance, of LLM. So we're going to say LLM is equal to GPT for all. And what we need to do is we need to specify the model. And to that, we are going to pass through our path. And we are also going to set verbose equal to true. There are another bunch of other parameters that you can set. This is the absolute minimum that you need to write in order to get GPT for all up and running. What we then want to do is create a prompt template. And I went through a bit more detail in terms of prompt templates in the crash course, as well as the documents video. So for now, we're going to say prompt is equal to prompt template. And we want our input variable. We're just going to set it to question. And then our actual uh, template, the L-A-T-E. We're going to set that equal to a multi-line string. And we're going to say our question is equal to, we'll say colon, and then we can include our question there and we'll structure it and say answer. Let me think that through step by step. So we could tweak this. You could change a prompt template based on a little bit of prompt engineering. You could even say, um, let's go through this. Let's think step by step. Cool. That's our template kind of set up. So again, you could play around with this depending on how you wanted to actually structure your prompts. I've kept it reasonably simple. We've just gone and said question is equal to the question that we're going to be passing through to our prompt template. And then the answer is going to start out by saying, let's think step by step. Let's actually make it, let's think step by step. Then what we can do is we, all we really need to do is set up our LLM chain. And this is going to bring our LLM, which is our GPT for all model and our prompt together. So let's actually go and do that. So we're going to say our chain is going to be equal to our LLM chain. And our prompt is going to be equal to our prompt template, which we just created over here. And our LLM is going to be equal to our GPT for all LLM. So we can paste that in there. Beautiful. And that is our LLM chain now done. The baseline LLM chain was now set up. All we needed to do was pass through the prompt and using the run method, stack them up. So we actually need to put some of this into action, right? So we've now gone and defined all the stuff, but right now we're not actually doing anything with that prompt. We actually need to send it to our chain that we've got over here. Super simple because we've already set up the structures, right? All we need to do is update our st.write area. Well, first up, we actually need to pass our prompt, pass the prompt to the LLM chain. And the way that we're going to do that is we are going to run chain.run and we are going to be passing through the prompt that we've got over here to that. That is going to return a response. So we're going to store that inside of a variable over here. So response, and we're going to set that equal to whatever we get back from our chain. What we then need to do is just make sure that we write it back to our screen. So if I grab that response and pass it through to st.write here, that should effectively give us exactly what we need. So we're now, let's just quickly walk through the flow. So we've got our LLM, we've got our prompt template. Both of those are sent through to our LLM chain. Then if our user types in a prompt and hits enter, then we trigger anything that happens down here. What is gonna happen down here is we pass through the prompt to our LLM chain, which we set up over there. And then we are gonna write out the response that we get back from our chain to the screen. The model weights that we defined in our path variable pointed to the Gnomic AI snoozy 13 billion parameter model. If we prompt our app, let's say, asking about the fastest car in the world, we should get back a response. And what do you know? It's identified the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 plus as the fastest car in the world, just a tad faster than my 20 year old RAV4. Now, rather than just looking at one model in isolation though, I wanted to see how some of these open source GGML models stack up against each other and open AI. I designed six tests to put our models through. The first one, basic chat Q and A. Side note, I'll share the code for the comparison app a little later. Let's establish a baseline with OpenAI. If we ask about the difference between nuclear fusion and fission, 
information. Shout out to James Briggs for the info. We get a pretty coherent response. OpenAI's text DaVinci 003 calls out fusion as combining two or more atomic nuclei and fission as splitting. Any nuclear scientists out there, let me know whether or not this actually checks out. Now, what if we ask Mosaic ML's 7 billion parameter commercially licensable MPT instruct model? To be perfectly honest, it doesn't look too bad. It still calls out the main idea around splitting and fusing, albeit with a focus on astrophysics. The thing is though, this was an absolute pain in the buttocks to get up and running. You see, when I used the base prompt template that I wrote, I got responses that were about as good as me giving a speech after a multi-pint pub session. Gibberish. After banging my head against my desk for two and a half hours, I went for a run and figured maybe I could reverse engineer how the GPT for all GUI app worked. Looking at the underlying GPT for all library, I noticed that the chat completion method used a prompt template which clearly delineated instructions, prompts, and responses. So I updated the prompt template to do the same. And well, I'll show MPT's new sunflower poem in a sec. Asking the same question to the Gnomic AI trained 13 billion parameter non-commercially licensed Llama inspired model called Snoozy, oh my God, that's quite a mouthful. We got great responses as well. Short, simple, and to the point, and very similar to what text DaVinci 003 was generating. What if we wanted to write an email telling our customers about a sale though? OpenAI's text DaVinci breezed through it pretty quickly, even mentioning a 25% discount. MPT did pretty well here as well, creating a practical and well-structured template with placeholders for the customer's name, your name, and company name. There was a weird set of brackets and a dollar sign that it generated at the start of every response though. If you use this model in isolation, this would be pretty easy to strip out with some string slicing. Snoozy did even better at this and even offered up a discount code to our customers. And speaking of discounts, you can get 50% off my full stack machine learning course at Courses from Nick for the next week. In it, you'll learn how to build production grade machine learning models from the ground up. And I'm about to add a Langchain project to the course next week. Grab the course now and you'll get access to the videos as I release them. If you're already a student, you'll get immediate access. And if you buy it and you don't like it, don't stress. Just ping an email to nick at coursesfromnick.com within 30 days and I'll give you a complete refund, no questions asked, as soon as you send that through. And if you've got any questions, shoot me an email at that same location and I'll get back to you. Now, how about a poem? Text Da Vinci is a modern day Shakespeare, so asking it to write a poem about sunflowers was a sure thing. It goes into a literary exposition of those towering golden helianthus. MPT, however, begun hallucinating and mistook sunflowers for sunnies? Maybe there's a metaphor somewhere there. I'm not so sure about those results, but it is an interesting read. You let me know. Snoozy comes through with the goods though, even rhyming throughout. And boom, we now have an LLM app using open source models. We're gonna call it Nopen AI. T-shirts coming soon. Interestingly, when you download the models through the GPT for all GUI, there's information about whether the models are commercially licensable, which guides you as to whether or not you can bake these into your startup or business app. I wish I could stop while I'm ahead, but I can't. So we're gonna take this further. I originally planned on building a trading integration with an algo trading platform Platform, but travel has been kicking my butt. Let me know what other LLM ideas you've got. So I'm gonna refactor the app to use the Python tool chain with our Nopen AI app. All we really have to do is swap out the LLM chain with a Python agent. Before we do any swapping out, what we actually need to do is import a couple of additional things. So we're gonna go from langchain.agents.agenttoolkits. We are gonna import the create Python agent function. Where is it? Create Python agent, perfect. And then what we also wanna do is we wanna import the Python tool chain. So let's say it's Python tool chain imports. So we're going to go from langchain.tools.python.tool. We're going to import the Python REPL tool. Perfect. So that will give us the two main dependencies that we need to actually get our Python app now up and running. While we're at it, we can actually get rid of the prompt template and LLM chain because we're not going to use those anymore. So I'm just going to delete those. We could also comment them out if we didn't want to delete them completely. And we can actually get rid of our LLM chain and our prompt template. Now, keep in mind that this is kind of optional. You don't need to go down this route, but I do like the agent executor type uh, tool chain from Langchain. So create a Python agent and we're going to say Python agent is equal to create Python agent. All we need to do to that is pass through our LLM and we also need to create a tool set and we are going to set that equal to our Python REPL tool. This actually means that you can trigger Python, not only write, get it to write Python, but actually trigger Python via this Langchain agent. I think it's personally absolutely amazing. And we're also going to set verbose equal to true. And then all we really need to do is swap out our chain down here with our Python agent. 
Now we should be able to go and use our Python agent as opposed to our basic LLM chain. Before dumping the open source LLMs, I had two more tests. Dropping a block on Formula One over to OpenAI got us a pretty neat summary of the motorsport racing event. MPT Instruct seemed to maybe have reached its limits here, although I'm not completely sure whether or not this was due to an incompatibility with the GPT-4 class or something else. I'm sure with a little fine tuning, it could probably work, but I did try with varying hyperparameters, adjusting temperature and sampling settings. It just seemed a bridge too far. It was generating Arab characters and started hallucinating, referring to a death in the sport. Was this it for open source LLMs? Nope. Snoozy came through with the goods, generating an abstractive and coherent summary of the Wikipedia extract. At the same time, I tested out another Llama 13 billion parameter derivative, Vicuna, this time trained by some prominent US universities, again, generating a pretty short and sweet summary. It was killing me that MPT wasn't quite working. Along the way, I did try the base and chat models with the GPT for all class. The chat model didn't seem to return results. This is probably a work in progress, to be honest. They seem to have the same issues that Instruct did, going a little bit wild. One of the things I've been testing out at work has been few shot prompting, so I figured, Hey, let's give it a crack here. The test case was to look at a sequence of numbers and evaluate a condition. Here the prompt outlines the numbers 15, 32, 5, 13, 82, 7, and 1, and notes that the odd numbers in the group add up to an even number. Ideally, we would want our model to respond true or false. 15 plus 5 plus 13 plus 7 plus 1 add up to 41, which would render this condition as false. And boom, Tech Da Vinci comes through with the goods. Snoozy, however, got caught snoozing here, and unfortunately couldn't replicate the results using the same prompt. Admittedly, this chain of thought reasoning is quite complicated, even for Ooh. most modern LLMs. Vicuna, however, managed to get the sum right, which, to be honest, is kind of amazing. Unfortunately, its chain of thought led it to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. Still not a bad effort. This brings us to the final test, using the LLMs inside of a Python agent with self debugging. I wanted to see if OpenAI could calculate the 12th number in a standard Fibonacci sequence. Now this one's up for debate. The 12th number in a Fibonacci sequence would be 89 if you started from zero, which from my two minute Googling seems correct, but it would be 144 if you started from one. Without clarifying, Text Da Vinci comes up with 144, right? Hmm. Wrong, you let me know. The big snooze dog, however, after 17 minutes of setting my CPU on fire came through with 89, I know. Crazy. Mind you, even though it got the answer right, it took so long running on CPU that I managed to make lunch while it was recording this demo snippet. I did see there's a way to run GPT for all on GPU, so maybe next video. All the code to get this up and running is available via my GitHub account in the description below. I've included really detailed instructions inside the README, as well as the requirements of TXT files, so you know exactly what libraries and versions I use. I'd love to know if you're building any interesting LLM apps. If you do manage to build them and create a video, make sure to tag me on Twitter and or LinkedIn. I'll include my handles there, I'd love to see what you're getting up to. And if you're keen to continue your Langchain journey, check out the Langchain crash course that we did up here.